Welcome back to the TWSN YouTube channel. Today we have another full round one NFL mock draft. Going a little bit away from the team specific ones today. But if you're enjoying the team specific series, make sure you let me know what team you guys want to see next and leave any comments and thoughts about your team's picks down below there as well. Um, the draft is kind of approaching really fast. I love how it always kind of sneaks up on you, even though I sit here every day and wait, wait for it um, and can't wait for the day it's here. And, you know, the rumors are swirling this and that. Um, with this mock today, I think we're going to go a little bit more quarterback heavy than what I've done in the past. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but that's just kind of the vibe I'm getting. Um, and as always, quarterbacks always tend to go higher than they should sometimes. And I think that's the case with this draft. But there are some guys that I like. There are some fits that I like. And we'll see kind of how it plays out going a little bit more quarterback heavy this time around. Obviously, here at one, Jags don't need a quarterback. It's tough. It seems like they're not going to go off into linemen anymore, and it kind of just seems like Aiden Hutchinson is the guy for them. I still think Kayvon Thibodeau is the best player in the draft overall. But for some reason, people, you know, regardless of why he's fallen, people want to act like he's fallen. So whatever, we'll, we'll 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 go with that narrative for now. But yeah, we'll start it off with Aiden Hutchinson first overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now I said we're going to go a little bit more quarterback heavy. And I think that's going to start here at number two with Malik Willis to the Lions. I know the Lions kind of need a lot of different things, but a high upside QB at two isn't the worst thing for them. It's a little bit risky because I think you can maybe get a safer guy, maybe even just at 32. But for now, you can't really argue taking a guy at two with as much upside that Malik Willis possesses. They have Jared Goff, so they don't need to rush him into action right away. You can kind of sit behind him, learn some things, and continue to improve. Because if Malik Willis can hit that ceiling, he's going to be absolutely unreal in the league. Now here at three, um, I think this is going to be an edge. And it's tough for me because months ago, I was tweeting about hyping up Trayvon Walker so much that he's going to go way earlier than people expect. Um, and as a big Trayvon Walker guy... I think the hype has gotten a little bit out of control. I think he's a top 10 player in my mind, absolutely. Probably a top 7 player for me, maybe even a little higher. But for the Texans at 3, um, I'm going to go Kayvon Thibodeau. I think they'll come around to their senses. I know, they're like I said, alluded to earlier that he's going to fall a little bit. I think the Texans are going to kind of take advantage of what many people thought was going to be the number 1 pick for a while, and kind of until we got to the draft process. Um you know, they took Clowney first overall a few years ago. Um, not that um, Thibodeau is Clowney, but they're not afraid to take that edge early. They they clearly value that position. So I think they take a falling Thibodeau there at three, and they should be extremely happy about it. Um, at four, man, these, these New York teams are very tough. They both like these corners. They both need offensive line. Um, maybe the Jets go Q, or wide receiver at 10. Um, it's it's really tough here. I think I think I'm gonna go ahead and give them Evan Neal here at four, kind of share up that tackle position with Beckton and Neal. Um, their offensive line is phenomenal. If you add a, a guy at four, Evan Neal or even Eka Maquano would be absolutely unreal. And you have another pick at ten to kind of a luxury pick a little bit to go with the receiver, to go with the corner, just to really go with whatever you feel necessary. But adding another legit piece on the offensive line to protect Zach Wilson is awesome in my opinion. Um, number five, okay, like I said, the New York team's going to have these these similar thoughts and I think Ekamakwanu here at five is awesome for the Giants. They need offensive line help. He, he has more versatility than Evan Neal. He can play guard. He can play tackle. He can move around a lot and not that necessarily that's going to be his role in the NFL, but it's always nice to have some versatility, and some experience playing and a bunch of other positions. And I think Aquanu, I think the Giants are really ecstatic that Aquanu fell to them at five. Now, six, I not the biggest fan of this, but I, I just I think this is gonna be Kenny Pickett. I'm not a Kenny Pickett guy at all whatsoever. Not even a little bit. Um, but Matt Rule has the Kenny Pickett connection. They need a quarterback. You can kind of, he's kind of one of the few quarterbacks that can kind of step in and play right away if they really wanted him to. Um, but it's just, I think Carol, Carolina, Matt Rule, Matt Rule's going to stick to that Kenny Pickett connection. He's going to take him at six. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of it. But that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. 
Um, and yeah, the P P Carolina Panthers with Kenny Pickett there at six. Pickett Panthers, baby. Um, now at seven, Ekamakwanu at, at five for the Giants. This one's tough for me. I think it's one of these top two players on the board, Trayvon Walker and um, Sauce Gardner. I think that they... I'm going to go Sauce Gardner. I think the one of the New York teams will end up with him. Um, I love Trayvon Walker a whole lot. And I think... Um, I don't. He's not going to last on the board much longer for me, um, but I think with the Giants shopping, Bradbury potentially cutting him, they need some corner help desperately. And if they view Sauce Gardner as a top corner in the draft, that is what they're going to do. Um, maybe, like I said, maybe if Trayvon Walker is there, they take him, or maybe they take Walker at five, whatever it is. But for now, I have Equanu at five, Sauce Gardner at seven. Now, the Falcons are a really interesting one. This could be another quarterback um, but I don't really think so. I think if they want a quarterback, they should probably trade down a few spots just to maximize some value and some potential there. Um, their top need is edge. I'm going to keep the Georgia boy in the state of Georgia and going, you know, from the Georgia Bulldogs to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, there's not much to it. I think Trayvon Walker is by far the best player on the board here at eight. Um, I think, like I said, he can go a lot higher. Um, I don't think he's going to go as early as some of the teams or some of the rumors are. That he that he will, um, but I think at eight to Atlanta is probably the lowest I can see him going. Maybe nine to the um, to the Seahawks potentially could be as low. But I love Trayvon Walker as a player so much, so I really like that fit there in Atlanta, keeping the Georgia boy in state. Now here at nine is a tough one. I don't think it'll be a quarterback. Um, I really don't. I think let's just go ahead. I know this is probably Se Seahawks fans probably aren't gonna like this as much um i don't think you're gonna go quarterback jermaine johnson is a total possibility he definitely is Derek stingley is a possibility but i think they want sauce gardner at nine he fits everything that they want in a the corner they covered the height the length um and that's what sauce gardner has that Stingley doesn't really necessarily have so i think right here at nine they're gonna settle for not even settle they're gonna go charles cross i think that they want to protect drew lock or at the very least they want to protect whoever their quarterback is you know maybe they're not gonna have a very good year and they'll have a top pick next year to go at a quarterback and i think that if that is the case you're gonna be really excited you took charles cross the year before um seattle's got to get better in the trenches um, no, no doubt about it. They got to get better on the defensive side of the ball. But I think Charles Cross is one of the best pass protecting tackles in the draft in general. He's not, he doesn't have that mean nastiness to him that some of these other guys have. But he's a super textbook, fundamentally sound tackle. And I think Seattle will be very happy with him at nine to protect whoever their future quarterback is. Now, 10, I think the Jets are pretty happy. That, you know, this is tough for me. I think a lot of people think this is a wide receiver, but I just don't. Um, it very easily could be, but I'm just going to go ahead and give them Derek Stingley Jr. and pair Evan Neal with Derek Stingley. Um, it could very well be a wide receiver, but I just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I really like Elijah Moore. I like Corey Davis, and there's just a lot of depth in this draft that I, I don't really necessarily want them to spend a top pick on a receiver when there's no clear cut number one. If they really do want a receiver, maybe they can try to trade down and kind of maximize some value there again. Um, but if they stay pit, pat at 10, um, I think a corner, an edge, paired with an offensive tackle early or vice versa would be the move for them. Now at 11, this is another interesting one. <sighs> Washington can do a lot of different things. Everybody knows how solid that defense is. Battled some injuries last year. They got Carson Wentz. They have Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson, Logan Thomas. Um, and in my opinion, I'm, I think Kyle Hamilton is kind of like that last missing piece for that defense. They take advantage of Kyle Hamilton falling a little bit. Um, the safety position has been interesting for them. They have Cameron Curl. They had Landon Collins. He's now gone. So maybe Hamilton can kind of come over and play that Landon Collins role. He can kind of be a box safety. And they haven't had the best linebacker production, so maybe he can kind of cover that up as well. I think Kyle Hamilton to Washington is a phenomenal fit, absolutely phenomenal um, we'll see if it happens. I could see them prioritizing other positions, just like most of the league. Safety isn't the biggest, 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 biggest position of need and value in the NFL. But I think Washington will love Kyle Hamilton. Now, 12 with the Vikings. This is one where they could, I think they could go a lot different directions. It wouldn't actually shock me at all if they took a receiver because Adam Thielen's getting up there in age. I think this could be, I think this could really be a receiver. 
Um, and that's something nobody's really talking about at all. Um, you can see their team needs a little bit safety interior. If it's a line corner, um, this definitely could be a corner if they view one of these guys that highly as well. Andrew Booth, Trip McDuffie, um, Kyer Elam as well. Let's go ahead and give them Trent McDuffie. I know Trent McDuffie's down here on the board a little bit, but I like McDuffie for the Vikings a lot because he can do so many different things. He can be a good boundary corner. He can be a good slot corner, but he can also be a really good safety as well. If you turn on the film, he's you can see him doing all of that. And I think when the Vikings have that need at safety, they have a need at corner. You can move him around and kind of put him wherever you think he's going to be more valuable to you. Different plays, different possessions, whatever it is. I think he's a versatile piece that they can move around to kind of help cover up some of the other needs that they may have in the secondary. Um, now at 13, this this one is, again, weird for me because I, I love Cameron Thibodeau for them at, at 3. And I'm looking here at 10. And, I mean, Jermaine Johnson is fun. Like, he's a really fun player. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world if they did double dip at, at edge early and just have an amazing young pass rush duo. That could certainly – that's that's a fun possibility. But I don't think I'm going to do it. I think – this is tough. They have all the wide receivers up there. I don't know if they're going to take a wide receiver either. I mean, they have Brandon Cooks, they have Nico Collins. They definitely could. Maybe they will. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and give them a receiver here. They have Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins, they have Brev Jordan underneath. Um, so what kind of receiver do we think that can really help that Texans team? They have a big body, they have a slot. Um, I'm kind of stuck here between Garrett Wilson and Jamison Williams. Um, because let's go ahead and give him Jamison Williams. I think that Brandon Cooks is a fast He's a fast dude, but he's not Jameson Williams fast. There aren't many people that are Jameson Williams fast. So I think, you know, they did just sign Brandon Cooks for a two-year extension. But now you can have a big body Nico Collins. You can have Brandon Cooks work the slot, maybe move outside a little bit. Same thing with Jameson Williams, but now you have some speed, some real dangerous speed. And they can kind of stretch the field. They can do a lot of things with Jameson Williams and Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins. And you kind of just got to continue to give weapons for uh, Davis Mills, big Davis Mills guy here, by the way. So I think that he's kind of the receiver that they need to complement the rest of their team. <laughs> now, 14, the Ravens, another interesting one. I think it's it'd be tough for them to pass on Jermaine Johnson here, and I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to give that to him. I think Jermaine Johnson's the best player available. I don't know if he's the biggest position of need there. I mean, Jordan Davis, Trevor Pinning. Or, you know, Jermaine Johnson make a lot of sense, but they develop pass rushers extremely well. And there's a pass rusher with as high upside as Jermaine Johnson possesses there at 14. It's kind of hard for me to see them not really taking him and just, you know, being extremely happy about doing so. Now, this is the first full mock draft since the Eagles and Saints deal. The Eagles have two picks. Now the Saints also have two picks. And it's interesting. What do the Eagles want first? Because all the teams behind them kind of need a receiver, which is the Eagles, one of the Eagles' bigger needs. So I think that's where they're going to go. They have Devontae Smith. Who do they want to complement Devontae Smith? And I think that a guy like Drake London makes a lot of sense there. Because, um, like, I love Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson might be my favorite receiver in the class but you look at the two receivers so far jameson williams you, i could see garrett wilson going there um just a super solid but jameson williams provides that speed that garrett wilson does not that the texans are missing and here at 15 i feel like garrett wilson and Devontae smith are similar players not the biggest guys in the world but they're super good route one, route runners just kind of get open to make plays they need they don't have that big body super x receiver they can just throw the ball up to that's why i think drake london makes sense there um and a lot of people here at 16 are kind of wondering why the Saints wanted to jump up and why they did what they did. And I really think it's to kind of get ahead of the Chargers a little bit. I think that the Chargers and the Saints share multiple um, common positions of need, wide receiver and tackle. And I think the Saints just kind of wanted the first pick at that. Um, and I, I think right now with kind of how the board has fallen – I could see the Saints obviously taking the last really good tackle in Trevor Pinning and kind of taking whatever receiver were to fall to them. Um, but, for, but for right now, I, I like Garrett Wilson here to the Saints. They've had some luck with some Ohio State players in the past. Him and Michael Thomas can be good complements of one another. 
like I said, it's a position of need. It kind of just it kind of just works there um, in New Orleans. Um, now 17, I know I've I've been a big this is gonna be Jordan Davis. 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 But I don't I, I'm starting to really think they're gonna prioritize tackle um because they worked on the defensive side of the ball so heavily. Yeah, they still could just decide to beef it up a little bit, but I do think they really want to bolster their line and Trevor Pinning at 17 is honestly a home run for them. I'm um, just a nasty tackle, super physical, and he's gonna keep Justin Herbert protected and that's kind of what you want and even if he might be a little grabby um you know you can you can live with it as long as he's keeping justin herbert off the ground and i think trevor pitting will do just that they signed sebastian joseph day they traded for khalil mack they signed jc jackson the defensive side of the ball is addressed it is so now I just continue to build around justin herbert give him some more protection maybe add a receiver later maybe add a defensive tackle later in the draft but for right now you get you book in tackles with trevor pinning and Rashawn slater <laughs> that's pretty hard to pass up um now here at 18 is, is an interesting one for for the eagles and i'm gonna give them jordan davis from georgia they signed they cut fletcher cox re-signed fletcher cox to a one-year deal so i think there's a very good chance that they want a Fletcher Cox successor and getting Jordan Davis in Jordan Davis at 18 is weird because some people have him higher some people have him a lot lower he's a defensive tackle that doesn't play that often but he has the capability in the athletic skill set to do so but like I said he can come in learn behind Fletcher Cox we have a guy that you know they play the same position they can kind of do the same things and Fletcher Cox has been one of the best defensive tackles in the league for a long time and Jordan Davis learning from him for a year it's, pretty, it's a pretty scary thought, and they can kind of just seamlessly transition from Fletcher Cox to Jordan Davis. It's a pretty home run idea in my mind. Now, the the, uh, the Saints here again at 19, I think that they'd want a tackle, but I don't, I don't want them to reach on a tackle. If you look at the tackle position here, the best one is probably Raymond. Yeah, and I'm not the biggest Raymond guy. Not for the Saints, anyway. He's he's just needs the Saints need someone who they can step in and kind of be there right away. And I don't really necessarily think that's uh, Raymond. He can he can develop into something really good, but I just think for this point in the time, they need somebody who can come in right away and produce. So this is it gets a little tough for me here. It really does. I think maybe they could reach. Um, maybe not. But I think if this is kind of how the board falls, they're looking for any impact player that can you know come in right away. There's a couple of guys that kind of stand out to me. Andrew Booth, Devontae Wyatt. Interior defensive line is kind of a need for them. It's, it's a little bit down here. It's not the, the biggest need in the world, but it, it's something that um, kind of could be a need. Another, another sneaky pick here is a guy like Daxton Hill. Uh, you see safety is that being a need for the fourth highest need for them um this also could be a quarterback this could very well be a quarterback um but i think that if they want to kind of continue to build for right now i don't know how i feel about this one but let's go ahead and give them daxton hill i know some people might think this is a little early for dax hill and i i can't say i i would disagree with you but the saints want to compete right now they do. Offensive tackle is not there. You already addressed a wide receiver. You, I don't think it'll be a quarterback there. It very well could be. But let, I'm just assuming it's not. Like I said, there's no tackle, no quarterback. Your next biggest need is a playmaker in the secondary, specifically the safety position. And Dax Hill can be that safety. He can also help you um, as a slot corner. You can kind of play a little bit outside, nothing crazy, but he's a versatile piece that you can move around in the secondary. I know they visited, uh, Tyron Matthew visited there. Maybe he ends up there, and maybe this pick, you know, is a waste at when, whenever that happens. But for right now, I think bringing Tyron Matthew in, you're bringing a similar-ish skill set with Daxton Hill, and we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, they want to compete, so it's just it kind of helps. He was the best player with their need that I think can really help them compete this year. Now, the Steelers at 20, they could use a lot. Um, they could really try to beef up the interior offensive line. And I, th I think that's what I'm going to do. I th I, th I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's just go ahead. I'm just going to give him Zion Johnson right away. Zion Johnson is phenomenal. I love him so much. I think he's going to 
be a great NFL player. And as a Bengals fan, it kind of sucks to see him go to the Steelers, but it is what it is. I think it's a great fit, great position of need. Maybe look for them to, this could be a quarterback as well. Um, this could be a Desmond Ritter. It really could be I'm a big Desmond Ritter guy. Um, but for right now, they just kind of want to protect who they have, maybe protect their quarterback in the future, and just continue to build in the trenches, which is something the Steelers always, always like to do. Uh, at 21 here, um, this one's this one's interesting. I Corner, I don't really necessarily see linebacker, but it's possible. But in my opinion, I'm just deciding between Andrew Booth Jr. and Kenyon Green. They need help on the offensive line. They traded Shaq Mason for virtually nothing. So Kenyon Green makes a lot of sense to me. But I think they might feel a little more comfortable with who they have, which is why they did what they did with Shaq Mason. So I think that's going to lead me to kind of go Andrew Booth here at 21. Maybe they go Kyrie Elam. Like I said, maybe they do go um, interior offensive line. For right now, I think they get a ball hawk um, and Andrew Booth Jr. They let J.C. Jackson go. Um, who, not that they're similar players, but J.C. Jackson is a guy that has a nose for the football, and I think Andrew Booth Jr. is a very similar player in that regard. Um, now here at 22, the Packers, you know, the first of their two picks. Um, what do we want to do with them? I think I think it's going to be a receiver. I, I just, I like Chris Olave to the Packers. Um, I think Chris Olave is just a super solid at everything. He doesn't stand out in too many areas, but he doesn't have too many holes as well. So it's just, obviously they need a receiver. One of these picks will be a receiver. It just happens to be Chris Olave here at 22. Um, now, the Cardinals are another team that they could go a lot of different directions, and none of them would surprise me. They can continue to dress the interior offensive line. They can go with Kenyon Green. They can go with Linderbaum if they wanted. Um, they do need corner. Maybe they continue with a Kyer Elam. Let's look at who's in their division. The Rams, 49ers, Seahawks. Maybe... I think the Cardinals might be kind of feeling the pressure of the Rams a little bit, and maybe they do get a little bit pressured into a corner here, but it's not really pressure because they do need a corner. Let's go ahead and give them Kyrie Elam here at 29. Um, just a super good man press corner. It's, um, they can't really figure out that cornerback position. Um, you know, they had some success last year with some later drafted guys, but I think they still need a CB1, and Kyrie Elam can kind of come in and do that right away. Um, 24 is another... Another interesting one. I think the Cowboys could use a guy like George Karloftis. I really do like a George Karloftis here to them, but I also do think they need Kenyon Green. <laughs> they need some interior offensive line. They lost Leo Collins. They lost Connor Williams. Um, some other guys can up there in age. Um, so it definitely Kenyon Green, a very versatile offensive lineman, could make a lot of sense to me. Um, <laughs> It's just Carl Loftus or Kenyon Green. That's the tough part for me. I'm going to go ahead and give them Kenyon Green because I think there is some more depth in the edge rushers in this year's class and the interior offensive linemen. Um, so I think they'll take a versatile offensive lineman in Kenyon Green and kind of look to address their pass rush situation later in the draft where it stays like there's a lot more talent than their interior offensive line, in my opinion. And the Bills at 25. Um, Bills can do anything they want. They're a good team. They picked this low for a reason. Um, they kind of addressed, addressed all of their interior defensive line, defensive line issues as a whole. They could use a corner, but no corner has really fell to them here. So I think that they're going to look elsewhere. I think receiver. I think the Bills could be a receiver pick here. And let's go ahead and give them Trey Burks from Arkansas. A really, really fun Um compliment to Stefan Diggs. He's a bigger body guy, but he can play inside, he can play outside. He can you can give him the ball in the backfield. He can do a lot of fun things. Um just a, another super versatile wide receiver that the Bills can use. I know they have Gabe Davis. They signed Crowder, um but they did let Cole Beasley go. Sanders is going to be gone. Just in general, they're going to need some they need some more youth at that wide receiver position. They signed Stefan Diggs to a long-term deal. Um Let's just say, you know, Crowder's one short, one term, one year deal. Um, next year, you'd have Gabe Davis, Burks, and Stefan Diggs. Maybe Burks overtakes Davis, whatever it is. You get a very versatile Traylon Burks in a passing offense that literally is obsessed with throwing the ball. So I think Burks there, 25 to the Bills, is something I could definitely see happening. I think that 
Um, if one of the corners were on the board, like for example, if I would have decided to go with Carl Loftus at 23, Elam would be an easy pick for the Bills there at 25. The Bills will address corner early, early this year. And maybe, you know, maybe they take a shot on a Kyler Gordon. Maybe they take a, you know, I don't think they would take a shot on a Woolen, but they're, they're a good team. They have the ability to take risks like that if they see fit. Um, now here at 26, the Titans. This is a tough one for me. It is. I'm not going to lie. Quarterback wouldn't shock me. I don't think they'll do it because I still think they're in the driver's seat in their division. Um, so I think maybe if they do it, they'll take one in the mid to late rounds. Um, wide receiver is totally an area of need for them. They added Robert Woods. Julio's gone. They have A.J. Brown still. Um, they kind of need a compliment to him. They still could use some offensive line help with Tyler. You know, they maybe maybe Tyler Linderbaum could make some sense. Maybe Devin Lloyd. Um, but I like Jahan Dotson here. Um, Dotson's a kind of a polarizing player. A lot of people really like him. A lot of people aren't that high on him. But I think they just need him. They need a receiver. I think he's a great, 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 phenomenal compliment to A.J. Brown. Um, just get some speed on that offense, kind of help stretch the field. And a guy that can do a little bit of everything um, with Penn State, he's going to take his talents over there to Tennessee and kind of continue to be that versatile speedster compliment receiver. Now, 27, interior offensive line, big need here for the Bucs. Um, I know they have Ryan Jensen, but I still like Tyler Linderbaum here. Um, I know maybe he won't play guard. I don't know what the situation would be, but they need they're win, they're in win now mode. It's no secret about it. They're in win now mode, um, and I think Linderbaum is arguably the biggest position of need for them with interior offensive line. And you just kind of take that and run with it. You work it out later. If he's going to play guard, he's going to play guard. If he's going to play center and move Jensen over, that's what you do. I doubt that happens, but he's just a phenomenal player, phenomenal athlete in a position of need, and they got to keep Tom Brady protected if they want to be good. I think they know that, and I think that's why they kind of take not a risk here with Linderbaum, but a position that they desperately need. Maybe you have to play him out of position, whatever it is. He plays interior offensive line, and that's their desperate need, and the upside for him is through the roof. And that's just kind of why I think the Bucks take a shot on him there at 27. Now at 28, the, the Packers again. I love – I just – give me George Karloff. This. They, he's just – I have – I've had them going boy on Mafia in the past, but – um, Carl Loftus is still on the board this time around. So I think that Carl Loftus kind of slides down a little bit. Moffat slides down a little bit, and the Packers get an impact edge here at 28. It's as simple as that. I think now at 29 and 30, the Chiefs, I think a lot of people kind of expect this to be a receiver. And in my opinion, none of these people are first-round receivers. They're just not. Maybe George Pickens. I like George. I like all these receivers. I do. I love all four of these I love Calvin Austin, um, but in general, I don't think it's the best call for Chiefs to go with the receiver early. I think if they want, they they wait and they take you know David Bell, Amechi, any of these people in the mid rounds. You roll with what you have for this year, and you completely bolster your defensive side of the football. And then if you notice that the wide receiver one position is that massive of a need, you just that's your one hole to fill in the off season, um, or like in the next year. Or at the trade deadline, whatever it is, but I think it'd be really smart of the Chiefs to go to kind of go both of defensive picks here. I don't know if that's something that they would do, but that's what I'm gonna do, and that's something I could see them doing simply because you have Patrick Mahomes. Why not see what he can do with with Juju, McCall Hardman, Travis Kelsey, uh, Marquez Valdez scaling? Like the receiving core isn't what you're used to, but it's still a talented room. Um, you still have Travis Kelsey. Like, you still have Patrick Mahomes. Your offense is probably going to be fine. You need to really fix the defensive side of the ball. You just do. Um, so that's why I kind of think they're going to they're gonna do that here. And the first thing, I love Boyamatha here to the Chiefs. Just an uber-athletic edge rusher. Um, you can kind of keep Chris Jones inside. And you can get to the passer. The, the Chiefs, um, you know, they, they, got, they got a little lucky with Melvin Ingram coming over from the Steelers and producing as well as he did. Um, but you need some some you need some upside on that defense, and there's not many people in the draft alone with the upside Boy Amafe has. Wouldn't surprise me if he goes much earlier than this, simply based off his athletic profile and his upside in general. But if he's here at 29, I think the Chiefs. And this is it's one of the perfect fits in the draft, in my opinion. You need a high upside edge rusher. Simple as that. Boy Amafe is that. 
Um, now here at 30, Chiefs again. There's a couple people that grab my attention just on this board right away. And it's Lewis Seen, Jaquan Brisker a little bit, and then Devontae Wyatt. And a I mean, these linebackers are interesting too, but I don't necessarily think they need that. Perron Winfrey is another great interior pass rusher as well. Um, I think that they would like a corner again. Um, you know, like I said with Elam, if he falls. But these safeties are also really interesting in kind of what they want to do. Um, I mean, I know they signed Justin Reed. I don't. This this is a tough one. I they don't necessarily need interior. With they have Chris Jones and you just added Moffat, so Chris Jones can stay inside. Um, but it's still nice to have. A, um, I mean, why he's a great player. He's the 19th ranked player on this board for a reason. But I'm gonna go ahead and give him Lewis Sign from Georgia. I believe I did this on my very first mock draft that I put um, here on the YouTube, and I like it. And it still makes a lot of sense to me. He can do it all. They need to fix the secondary. They need to fix the defense. Um, and I really don't think they should take a wide receiver at 30 or 29. Um, because I don't, I don't know how much a receiver is going to go in between them and their next pick. There'll be a few, but I still think they can get great value in the second round if that's what they want to do, or they can still run it with the receiving core, the tight end core that they have now, and see how big of a need it really is. But I really like the idea of double dipping on defense there for them. We're going to kind of move into the Bengals here at 31. Another really complex pick here. They, they really address the offensive line. Um, they still... You know, maybe could use a guard or develop just a really high upside offensive lineman in general. Um, they need an interior pass rusher. They need a corner. They really need a corner. Like uh, the three people I'm deciding for here with the Bengals are Devontae Wyatt, Perion Winfrey. I love him so much. And Kyler Gordon. Kyler Gordon checks a lot of the boxes that the Bengals look for. Um, and I think if, if they do want a corner, he's going to be the corner that is most likely to be available, and that kind of fits what they want to do. Um, but for, I mean, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and give him Devontae Wyatt. I know he's a little bit older of a prospect, but he's a, at a position of a need, and he's a he's a damn good player. Um, you know, they re-signed B.J. Hill. They lost Larry Ogajobi. Um, well, Larry Ogajobi went to the Bears, and then he failed his physical whatever. Um, but I think Devontae Wyatt makes a lot of sense at 31. Perron Winfrey makes a lot of sense. A corner makes a lot of sense. Um the Bengals are going to be interesting, kind of what they do here. I think the Bengals might, they love to trade down in round two. And because they can't really trade down in round two because they have pick 31 this year, maybe this is a trade down spot for them. But for right now, he said with a great prospect in Devontae Wyatt, a little bit older. But the Bengals, the Bengals need talent right now, especially at that position. So Devontae Wyatt at 31 makes a lot of sense to me. I'm now at 32 with the Lions. We have them t taking. Malik Willis at two. Um, now, what do we want to do with him? I think they could really take a shot on a guy like David Ajabo late. I really do, and kind of give him a year off, let him develop, and you kind of have two top 12 talents in the draft. That's certainly something I could see them doing. Um, they do need an edge, but I love Arnold Ebikati as well. Uh, maybe they Maybe they decide to go him. They need some safety. There's some there's some very fun safeties here as well. This is a tough pick because they could also go receiver. They can go a lot of different ways. But I think I think I kind of like Jaquan Brisker here. Um, another all these safeties are so fun because they're so versatile. And the Lions kind of just you know when you have a bunch of hill, holes to fill, adding one player that can kind of patch up a bunch of different areas is something I like a lot. It wouldn't surprise me if they go any direction there at 32. They can really do anything, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but for right now, I have them with Jaquan Brisker, a super versatile player there at 32. And now we can kind of look and recap through this draft. Um, like I said, I, I wanted to go a little bit quarterback heavy, and I, I still only took two quarterbacks, um, and I still am not the biggest Kenny Pickett fan. I really think Desmond Ritter will probably go within the first round. I'm just not sure where. You know, maybe the Steelers at 20 make a lot of sense to me. Um, the Saints at 19, uh, maybe the uh, the Lions decide to go with a different player at two, and then Desmond Ritter at 32. Um, but there's there's a lot of fun possibilities with the quarterback position. Um, and I'm really interested to see how that plays out and the wide receivers situation plays out. But yeah, that's going to wrap up this first round mock draft. The draft is 
quickly approaching and I am so excited for it. Make sure you follow along on TWS and social media. Subscribe here on the YouTube channel for tons of draft content. We have a draft show airing two days a week up until now, until the point of the draft. I believe it's Mondays and Thursdays, so you do not want to miss that. Like I said, we're going to be absolutely ramping up the draft content until the draft. Tons of mocks, tons of rumors. It's a lot of fun, a lot of draft content you do not want to miss. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again on the TWSN YouTube channel soon.